Hi everyone, here we are back for Ways of the World, a brief global history with sources. As we continue our study of the worlds of the 15th century, our focus today are civilizations of the 15th century. So let's start with Ming Dynasty China. China had been badly disrupted by Mongol rule and the plague. But there's a recovery under the Ming Dynasty, which is 1368 to 1644. There's an effort to eliminate all signs of foreign rule, uh, new promotion of Confucian learning, and Emperor Yongle, who ruled from 1402 to 1422, sponsored an 11,000-volume encyclopedia summarizing all the wisdom of the past. And they reestablished the civil service examination system, created a highly centralized government where great power was given to court eunuchs, the state restored land to cultivation, constructed water, uh, waterworks, and planted perhaps a billion trees. And this was perhaps the best governed and most prosperous civilization of the 15th century. There are also maritime adventures. Chinese sailors and traders had become important in the South China Sea and in Southeast Asian ports in the 11th century. Emperor Yongle commissioned a massive fleet that launched in 1405. And Muslim eunuch Zhang He endeavored to engage distant peoples in the Chinese tribute system. The Chinese government abruptly stopped his voyages in 1433. Many had regarded them as a waste of resources. And Chinese merchants and craftsmen continued to settle and trade in Japan, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Southeast Asia, but without government support. All right, map 12-1, Asia in the 15th, 15th century. So the 15th century in Asia witnessed the massive Ming Dynasty voyages into the Indian Ocean, the last major eruption of pastoral power in Timur's empire, and the flourishing of maritime city of Malacca. So which major cities did the Ming Dynasty voyages visit? The major cities visited by the Ming Dynasty voyages, demarcated here in the blue lines, are Bangkok, Malacca, Chittagong, Kutak, Calcutt, which is today modern Calcutta, Hormoz, Dofar, Aden, Jida, and Mogadishu. Let's compare uh, this map with the very first map from chapter 11. Which part of the Mongol Empire did Timur's empire most closely resemble? When this map is compared with Map 11.1, Timur's empire most closely resembled that of the Ilkhanate of Persia, though his territory also expanded into parts of the earlier Khanate of the Golden Horde. All right, European comparisons, state building and cultural renewal. A similar process of demographic recovery, consolidation, cultural flowering, and European expansion took place in Western Europe. European population began to arise again circa 1450. State building but fragmented with many independent and competitive states was driven by war. The European Renaissance uh, was a reclamation of classical Greco-Roman traditions and it began in the commercial cities of Italy circa 1350 and lasted till about 1500, 1550. This is a quote-unquote returning to the sources as a cultural standard to imitate. There's a turn to greater naturalism in art. Uh, for example, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo. And no, I'm not just talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's a quote-unquote humanist scholars that explored secular topics in addition to religious matters. Uh, Christine de Pizan wrote against misogyny. And the Renaissance thinkers more con were more concerned with describing the world as it is rather than exploring eternal truths. All right, map two, two, Europe in 1500. So by the end of the 15th century, Christian Europe had assumed its early modern political shape as a system of competing states, threatened by an expanding Muslim Ottoman Empire. So based on the map, what factors account for the relative political and social fragmentation of Europe? Well, geography played a role, with numerous islands and narrow land passages preventing one ruler from controlling all the lands with his armies, given the technological limitations of the period. In addition, 
Rivalries between rulers contributed to an ongoing process of fragmentation as small rulers constantly vied to control every possible piece of land within their grasp. All right, here we have um, the Waldsmuller map of 1507, and I probably mispronounced that, and I apologize. Just 15 years after Columbus landed in the Western Hemisphere, this map, which was created by German cartographer Martin Waldseidmuller, reflected a dawning European awareness of the planet's global dimensions and the location of the world's major land masses. So based on this map, how did Europeans envision themselves within this world? Europe is placed in the center of this map and thus is depicted as the symbolic and idolized center of the world. Likewise, Europe is the most accurately drawn and most filled in of the regions of the world, which likely reflects the increased availability of data about Europe via via the other regions of the world. European Comparisons, Maritime Voyages So Portuguese voyages of discovery began in 1415, uh, particularly uh, supported by or uh, influenced by Prince Henry the Navigator, uh, Prince of Portugal. In 1492, Columbus reached the Americas. 1497, Vasco da Gama began sailing around Africa to India. And European voyages were small compared to Chinese ones in terms of fleet size. And unlike the Chinese, Europeans were seeking wealth, converts, and allies in the Crusades against Islam. Europeans used violence to carve out their empires. While Chinese voyager, voyages ended, European ones kept escalating and growing in terms of uh, size and distance. There was no overarching political authority in Europe to end the, vo the voyages, and rivalry between the European states encouraged more exploration. And much of the European elite were interested in overseas expansion. China had everything it needed, while Europeans wanted the greater riches of the East. And China's food production could expand internally, while the European system expanded by acquiring new lands. All right, map 12.3, Africa in the 15th century. By the 15th century, Africa was a panorama of political and cultural diversity encompassing large empires such as Songhai, smaller kingdoms such as Congo, and city-states uh, among the Yoruba, Hausa, and Swahili peoples. Village-based societies without states at all is among the Igbo and pastoral peoples such as the Fulb. Both European and Chinese maritime expeditions touched on Africa during that century, even as Islam continued to find acceptance in the northern half of the continent. Based on the map, what geographic features encourage the growth of African empires? The map demonstrates that African empires grew on rivers, the Songhai and Niger and Senegal rivers, the Congo on the Congo, and that's the Congo K on the Congo with the C, the Zimbabwe on the Zambezi, and the Ethiopia along the Nile. And this concludes our study of civilizations of the 15th century. I will see you guys next time.